Can a building bear witness to the anguish of those who perished within its walls? This question lingers in the air, almost tangible, as we approach the sinister facade of this hospital, a monolithic behemoth of corroding concrete and history. Built at the dawn of the 20th century in an Art Nouveau style, its towering spires and ornate, grotesque gargoyles are a stark reminder of an era long past. Its century-old walls, scarred and pockmarked from the passage of time, hold within them more than their fair share of life and death. They are the silent keepers of countless secrets and tales, their whisperings echoing through the abandoned hallways, telling stories of hope and despair, of life and death. Born in an era when modern medicine was taking its first tentative steps, this hospital was once a beacon of hope and a hub of knowledge. It offered refuge to the afflicted, a sanctuary for the suffering. Despite the ravages of war, the onslaught of disease, and the depths of human despair, it stood as a steadfast guardian of humanity. Its commitment is etched in the faded murals on its domed ceilings, the carefully crafted mosaics of its floors, a testament of time and dedication. The maternity ward, once resonating with the wails of newborns, now lays silent and vacant. The palliative care unit, where the solemn whispers of last goodbyes once filled the air, is now eerily still. The once bustling corridors, echoing with the lively cacophony of hospital life, lie deserted, replaced by an uncanny chill, a shroud of deathly silence that envelops the once thriving establishment. As we delve deeper into the years, the hospital morphs into a mausoleum, a repository of countless souls lost to time. It was the silent witness to their last breath, last prayer, last tear. In its echoing silence, one can almost hear the whispers of the past, an eerie symphony of joy, sorrow, relief, and pain. Now, long abandoned, this once vibrant hub of life stands as a stark reminder of past glory. The hospital lies submerged in an uncanny chill, an almost palpable sense of foreboding that seems to seep from the very walls. The moonlight casts long, ominous shadows through the broken glassless windows, illuminating the forgotten tales of eerie occurrences and strange happenings that have become part of its folklore. Disembodied voices, inexplicable cold spots and fleeting apparitions are rumored to haunt its deserted hallways. As night falls, the hospital's silent corridors echo with a chilling resonance, hinting at the horrors that lurk within its derelict confines. Our journey begins here, at the brink of twilight, on the threshold of exploring the haunted echoes of a time long past. In the shroud of darkness, the hospital, transformed into a spectral stage, is haunted by its unseen patients who commence their nightly rounds. This nocturnal ritual, a ghostly ballet, is dictated by fate and the audience, a monument that has gazed upon a millennia of dawns and dusks. The hospital, now an abandoned relic, appears void of life, yet it pulsates with the essence of those who once filled its antiseptic chambers. These unseen patients, spectral shadows, are mere whispers of their former selves. Some, once robust and vibrant, now stand tall and gaunt, their ethereal bodies slightly swaying in the cold air, their transparent hands clutching to the wheelchairs they were once bound to. Others, once frail and feeble, wander aimlessly, their hollow eyes mirroring the despair they endured within these walls. Their movements, slow and deliberate, are a tragic ballet of longing and sorrow, a chilling pantomime from a life long lost. The sounds that emanate, a spectral symphony, serve as stark evidence of their existence. They echo through the seemingly infinite maze of constricted corridors and forsaken wards, the eerie scrape of wheelchairs, the hollow clatter of crutches, and the faint rustle of spectral gowns. These metallic groans and ethereal whispers rebound off the frosty, moistened walls, instilling an omnipresent ambiance of dread and melancholy. Suddenly, the erratic flicker of lights punctures the darkness, a beacon to the wandering apparitions. These sporadic bursts of luminescence cast ghastly silhouettes on the decaying plaster, sketching spectral vignettes of those who once breathed, loved, and suffered within these confines. Each flicker a poignant emblem representing a life abruptly ended, a dream left unrealized, a love left unanswered. In this spectral setting, laughter intermingles with sobs, weaving an unnatural fusion of emotions. It is a gruesome orchestra of the departed, a somber composition of joy and despair, liberation and confinement, existence and oblivion. Each sound, each echo, serves as a moving testament to their struggle, their resilience, their valor. 
Despite the relentless march of time, their memories persist. They wander, eternally shackled to the torment of their final moments. They are the hospital's perpetual denizens, each with a tale to narrate, a recollection to impart, a voice yearning to resonate in the silence of the night. For those daring or reckless enough to venture into the hospital when twilight falls, the horror ensues. An ominous feeling wraps around the hospital, planting its frosty talons into the hearts of those who dare to navigate its shadow-laden corridors. The walls reverberate with muffled murmurs, secret exchanges among the nurses who have witnessed more than what their job description entails. Lines of terror etch their faces, their voices quivering as they divulge chilling experiences that transcend the boundaries of normalcy. A young nurse, Jane, still fresh and unseasoned, speaks of a spectral figure that appears in the children's ward, forever looking for her lost child. Another nurse, experienced and hardened, recounts an encounter with a figure in scrubs that vanishes as soon as she tries to offer assistance. Each room conceals its own malevolent story, narratives buried deep within the belly of the hospital. The doctors, initially dismissive, now find themselves wrestling with invisible entities, entities that scoff at the laws of science and logic. The tangible blurs into the intangible, the explicable into the inexplicable. The steadfastly logical minds of these medical professionals wobble on the precipice, their sanity questioned by the supernatural events that form the hospital's nightmarish reality. Dr. Smith, a renowned surgeon, was once a sharp-eyed, resolute man. His eyes, which once radiated determination and resolve, now mirror sheer terror. His hands, once steady and precise, now tremble with the weight of what he has encountered. After a late-night surgery, he recounts stumbling upon a group of spectral surgeons, forever stuck in a loop of a surgery gone wrong. The once familiar and comforting walls of the hospital metamorphose under the shadowy veil of the night, mutating into a maze of fear. The corridors, bustling with life and daylight, now stand eerily silent and abandoned, filled with an aura of dread. The faint scent of disinfectant is overpowered by the stifling stench of fear, the air heavy with an unspeakable terror seeping into their very beings. Every creak of the floorboards, every flicker of the lights, and each echo in the vacant hallways carries a story, each a silent plea for liberation, a desperate cry for release from the sinister chains of a past that refuses to rest. Every shadow conceals a secret, every creak echoes a plea for freedom. But it's not just the staff who are terrorized, the spirits have a bone to pick with the living. Such a statement might seem outlandish, yet it's the chilling truth that pervades every inch of this forsaken hospital's musty hallways. The spectral residents of this place don't merely hold a grudge against the living, they harbor a deep-rooted rage, born from the torment and anguish of their own premature end. These vengeful spirits are not just transient shadows or vague apparitions, they are tangible embodiments of unadulterated, unyielding wrath. Their fury manifests in creative, bone-chilling ways. Soft whispers reverberate through the echoing corridors, whispers that send shivers dancing down the spine of anyone daring or reckless enough to lend an ear. The whispers aren't just random noises, they are the voices of the departed, spinning heartbreaking tales of their despair, distress, and pent-up anger. Their communication isn't limited to sound. They reach out, leaving icy imprints on the skin of the living, traces so cold they could freeze even the most courageous hearts. It's as if they want us to share in their suffering, their biting, eternal loneliness. But their most unsettling manifestations transpire in the form of phantom surgeries. Disembodied moans of agony ricochet off the barren walls, a chilling echo of the surgeries that once took place within these very rooms. Failed maneuvers, fruitless attempts to salvage lives that were predestined for doom. These phantom surgeries serve as grim reenactments of their past, and it's almost as if one can feel the icy kiss of the surgical steel against their skin. The wrath of these spirits is relentless, unending. It's an omnipresent force as palpable as the bone-chilling air that permeates the hospital. The cold is not just a result of the absence of warmth, but a physical manifestation of their ceaseless anger. Ultimately, the hospital is not just a haunted house, it is a battlefield, a grim war zone between the living and the dead, where every corner could mean a surprise attack, and every step echoes with the screams of unseen fallen soldiers. The spectral surgeons operate on the terrified living in a bid to communicate their torment. The walls bear the phantom scars of this never-ending conflict. The spirits fight tireless, their fury transformed into an eerie haunting that brings the horrors of the battlefield to life. 
making this desolate hospital a relentless arena of spectral warfare. As the battle between the living and the dead rages on, a tragic event unfolds. One night, a lone, brave soul dared to step into the hospital's icy embrace, a paranormal investigator seeking to document the hospital's spectral inhabitants. Armed with his camera and an indomitable spirit, he ventured into the heart of the hospital, the operating theater, where the phantom surgeries were said to be most intense. The vengeful spirits, however, did not take kindly to this intrusion. The whispers grew louder, the icy imprints more pronounced and the spectral surgeries more vivid. The investigator, despite his courage, was visibly shaken. Yet, he persisted, determined to capture evidence of the afterlife. Then, in an unimaginable turn of events, the spectral surgeons turned their ire towards him. The operating theater was filled with a chilling cacophony of spectral voices and the phantom sensation of surgical steel. The investigator, overwhelmed and terrified, suffered a heart attack, his life extinguished in the heart of the haunted hospital. This tragic event only added fuel to the fire of the spirit's wrath. Their anger intensified, their manifestations grew more terrifying, and the hospital's reputation as a haunted battlefield was forever cemented. In the end, the hospital remains a monument to suffering, its halls echoing with the cries of the vengeful dead. The tragic ending of the brave investigator serves as a chilling reminder of the spectral warfare that rages within its walls. A testament to the unending nightmare, the hospital stands, a haunting beacon of the battle between the living and the dead. The haunted hospital perseveres, a relentless testament to the agony endured within its desolate corridors. Once a symbol of health and regeneration, it now looms as a bleak reminder of the darker fragments of human existence. Void of the vibrant sounds of life and recovery, it pulsates with the eerie cries of the neglected and tormented spirits. From each corner to every room, the depth of the torment is not only visible, but deeply felt within the crumbling structure of this once revered institution. The spectral torment lingers, an unending nightmare that thrives within the very marrow of the hospital. Unresolved, unanswered, the spirits are bound to the mortal realm, their thirst for revenge an unquenched flame that flickers in the cold, stagnant air. Long after the final heartbeat echoed through the silent wards and the final patient was laid to rest beneath the earth, the hospital remains a chilling symbol of their anguish. Their tales, their dread, their final breaths are woven into the DNA of the building, a macabre tapestry of the damned. The walls, the floors, the ceilings, every crevice of this accursed place is infected with their lingering essence. The disconcerting echoes of their cries, like spectral whispers, spill out into the mute darkness, carried by the restless wind to those brave or foolish enough to lend an ear. Every groaning door, every faltering light, every icy gust of wind carries the murmurs of the restless spirits trapped within its confines. Their silent screams permeate the air, resonating through the dilapidated halls. Visions of their anguished faces are mirrored in shattered glass windows, forever capturing their moments of despair. The unending nightmare lingers, etched into the fabric of time. The hospital doesn't merely bear witness to their suffering, it amplifies it. It feeds off it. It has become a ceaseless engine of torment, its gears and mechanisms greased by the perpetual pain and sorrow of those who once filled its wards. The question that echoes in the silence is whether this hospital will ever find tranquility? Or is it fated to remain a monument to anguish, a sanctuary for the vengeance-seeking dead?